Shalom, friends, and welcome to House of David television program. This is Rabbi Gennady, and today we are going to continue to have our walk or journey in the life of Abram. And the reason that we're doing that is because Abram is the father of the people of faith who believe in Jesus. That's number one. And also, Abraham is the father of physical Israel as well. So learning the foundations, learning the origin of this nation, Israel, and actually Christianity as well, we begin to understand certain truth because today uh, people are arguing about uh, Israel and existence of Israel and everything else, not really knowing or they don't really care the, of the origin of Israel and who was the father of this nation and actually Christians as well, who was Abram. And today we are going to look into this intensively as well. But before we're going to go and study this chapter, I'd like to thank you for supporting our ministry. We appreciate so much for your support and we are very thankful for your support because it is your support that sustains us on the air. Some people send us $10, which uh, what they can afford, and we're thankful for it. Some people send us $100, and some people sometimes send us more. And collectively like this, the more people we're going to have, the more things we can do and pay our bills. We've been standing by faith for over 22 years, preaching the gospel on television uh, before anything else. And I want to thank you and appreciate that you are prolonging our stay with television and allowing us to teach the Word of God, the nations, the nations. Thank you so much. You can donate to us by many different ways, and uh, we can talk to you about this on the phone, or write to us at the end of the program, you'll see our physical address, or call us. And thank you so much for calling us to find out how you can support. Let's go into the scriptures and study or continue to study the life of Abraham. As I was mentioning last time that we were talking about intensively uh, on chapter 12 of the book of Genesis and we just went through verse 1 and 2 and we uh, understood and we, go, we went actually deeper into the blessings of Abraham, uh, God says, and to the curses who will curse Abraham and his descendants as well where Abraham is from, why he was called the Hebrew in chapter uh, 14 of the book of Genesis, actually, and how the origin of Hebrews came up. So now we are going to continue to study this. If you didn't see our previous messages, give us a call, and uh, we will see what we can do, because uh, now we making, actually, available DVDs. So if you will call us and and ask for previous programs on this matter. We will uh, send you the DVD, and DVD is not expensive. It's only $15 a DVD shipping and, uh, and handling is included. And just give us a call, and we will talk about this. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old as he departed out of Haran. Remember, Haran was in the middle of the way to Canaan, and uh, his father, Terah, died. So he buried his father, and now he is to continue the journey as well as the, God, as the Lord spoke to him and said, I will bring to the land to which I'm leading you. So Abram was not the in initiator of this land. It was God was the initiator of this land for them to possess. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother, and so on, and all the substances. And then it says in verse 6, he passed through the land unto the place of Sichem, or Shechem, as we call it today. 
and the plain of Moriah, and the Canaanites was then in the land. So eventually Abram came to the land of Canaan. He made this um, hundreds of miles of journey, and now he is on the land. But he came first for, uh, to that city of Shechem. And what is that city of Shechem? Where it is situated and uh, why he stopped there? Shechem is situated about 30 miles northwest of Jerusalem. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto your seed will I give this land. And Abram, he has built an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Now we see for the first time, that Abram began to worship God. And it is interesting to understand that he never worshiped God outside of the parameters of the land that God has brought him in. As God has brought him to the land of Canaan, and when God appeared to Abram previously in verse 1 and 2, God spoke to Abram. Now God appears to Abram and said, unto your seed will I give this land. Sounds like a covenant that God is making, a verbal covenant. But the covenants in those days, as we understand, they always were made through a sacrifice, through the blood. And Abram builds an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. There is no altar without the sacrifice. Why did he do this? Because God has made another promise. He made a covenant to him, with him. He says, unto your seed will I give this land. And I don't think that was the in initiation of Abram himself. He felt to do this because he was now being led by the Spirit. And the reason that he has done this altar is because it was a covenant that God has made. That unto your seed I will give this land. So, who is the seed and what is the seed of Abraham? According to the Bible, we understand that the real and the very seed of Abraham came from Isaac and Sarai, Sarah, his wife, not Hagar but Sarah. So that seed is the seed of Abram. And after that, Isaac, after this, Jacob and the 12 tribes of Israel and so on. So as God says, unto your seed, I will give this land. He literally means the Israelites today. And then in verse 8, it says, and Abram removed from there unto a mount on east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar again unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. So now Abram, after he receives this amazing promise from God, he moves down east, closer to Jerusalem. He comes to Bethel passes Bethel, he comes to the mountain area that is between Bethel and the city of Ai, and he builds an altar there, and now Abram is calling upon the name of the Lord. Now he begins to call upon God. Before, God was calling upon him. Now Abraham is calling upon God. So I want you to see that progression a mighty progression as God is leading Abram into the promised land that God has chosen, which is his land, Israel today, makes covenants with him, seals covenants with him, and the progress of Abram and God is Abraham's life and, and, and God's fellowship with him is increasing now. So 
It was not just a one-time deal or two, three times deal that God spoke to him. No, God begins to move upon his life and Abraham begins to realize that's how we believers grow in God. When God is touching our life, when God has given us Jesus, when we come in through Christ, through our Messiah, to him, that's our first step. And then we begin to grow and expand our spiritual life and then we ourselves begin to call upon the name of the Lord so it's the process of growing there and Abraham journeyed going on still toward the south and now what we see it's another interesting thing that there was a famine in the land and Abraham moves to Egypt I'm not going to talk about this particular situation in Abraham's life when he moved to Egypt because there is another message that I have for that why he moved to Egypt and was it the will of God or not I will explain that to you later but now we are going to talk more about the place of Shechem and the place of Bethel and I and as Abraham moved there first As we look in prophetically of what is really happening with Abram and how he was led by the Spirit, let's talk about the uh, city of Sechem or Shechem. It is an important and biblical in a Middle Eastern city located on the border of Ephraim and Manasseh. It lay between Mount Ebal on the northwest and Mount Gerazim on the southwest. It also served in Israel as a Levitical city, as well as the city of refuge. And we can find this in Joshua. It lays about 30 miles north of Jerusalem. Abraham had a vision and received promises from God in Shechem. Jacob purchased land in it from Hamor, father of Shechem, in Genesis 33, verse 18, and committed himself and his family to the Lord there. It was God's intent to give Shechem to his people, for he owned it. In Psalm 60, verse 6, it says, God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice, I will divide Shechem, and met out of the valley of Sukkot. Gilead is mine, Manasseh is mine, Ephraim is also the strength of mine head, Judah is my lawgiver. So as we can see, there is so much information about this city of Shechem. The question is, did Abram come by himself to Shechem and stop there and begin to build the first altar to God where God said that I will give you this land? Or it was God himself by the Holy Spirit who brought Abram to that place first and made this covenant to him. Yes, it was God himself. And it is very important again to notice that the Lord appeared to Abram there. He appeared to him. So it was the right place. It was the right time. It was the right person who was Abram to step into this land and begin to possess it. Did Abram possess this land by himself? No, of course not. But it was given unto him and his descendants as a promise. We must know these things, not just historical things, but biblical, because that's where in the Bible, in the Word of God, you find all the information and all the declaration and all the, I would say, the Bible has become a legal document where God makes a covenant with Abraham concerning this land, concerning his people, and concerning everything what God spoke to Abraham and his people, descendants, who are Israel. Imagine Christians, when they are believers in Jesus, when they come in into the, as I explained to you before, into the, the commonwealth of Israel, into that land, into this promise that God has given to Israelites, 
into all these blessings. Um, today, we proclaim and declare every blessing to us because we believe when we come into God, God is blessing us. Amen. We believe in every promise of God concerning us. Do we really believe about every promise that God has made concerning Israel? He is the same God, and Israel are the people of God as well. Israel is fighting the enemies today. They fighting for the promised land. They fighting to be there and to live there because it was given to them from the beginning. Yes, they fighting for their rights to survive. Now, we are fighting too. Believers are fighting also for survival. Don't you think that the devil is not attacking you to get you off the rights of your salvation? To deny Jesus, to leave the place of salvation by deception. Satan is fighting every Christian in the same manner to deny Jesus, to leave that place of salvation, to leave that place of safety. So whatever happens in the physical realm with Israel, this is what is happening in the spiritual realm of the church. Because it cannot be separated because Israel is the root through Christ. And whatever happens to the root, the same thing happens uh, to the branches. In Romans 11 says that the Gentiles, they were grafted in. The church is grafted in, into the commonwealth of Israel, into that building. Jesus has become a cornerstone of this building. He didn't destroy that plan of God. He didn't destroy that building, but he has become the cornerstone of that building which you are building upon right now. It's the root that is holding up the tree. What is the root and who is the root? Father Abraham, Israelites, to whom everything was given, to whom was given all the blueprint of what Jesus has fulfilled. Be careful when we are uh, talking about Israel today. When Israel is fighting for the land, it's the same thing as you are fighting for your rights in God. And what is the promised land? You came to rest with God. Your promised land, my promised land today, it's a spiritual place with God. Where have you found shalom, peace? It's that's where God dwells with us. As we looked into the map, and as we begin to see with our physical eyes, we begin to see our spiritual journey as well. Amen. Now Abram comes to Shechem, and he sees for the first time in his life this God who, who leads him, who appears to him, and he begins to worship him because God makes a covenant. And he says literally, see this land? This land is going to be given to your descendants. Well, friends, now we're coming to the end of our program. And if you need an additional prayer, give us a call. We will definitely pray with you. If I cannot answer at the same time, I will come back to you. Just leave your message and the phone number, and I will be back to you. And thank you so much for studying with us the Word of God. Thank you so much for your support. We appreciate your support. Let us learn together the truth of God. The Bible says that my people perish without knowledge. If there is no knowledge of God and His ways, people surely will be perishing. It's not about this denomination, that denomination. It's about the Bible. It's about the truth, what God says in the Bible. But if you don't know the truth, the truth cannot set you free. But when you will know the truth, who is Christ and His Word, you will be set free. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Next time, we're going to continue talking about Abraham, and we will continue our journey 
to find out how God called Abram, what he has promised him, and all the rest of this story. It will be wonderful and powerful. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you, and shalom. Well, friends, uh, we just have finished our brand new feature film, The Restored. This film is a um, story about the restoration on people's lives from different perspectives, from different characters, and from different points of view. This movie is an hour and 48 minutes. It's a wonderful movie. We were filming it for almost a year, so now it is ready. You will enjoy this film. I know because even myself, when I was in the production of this film, and I was seeing this film so many times, but when we have put this film together, and we were reviewing this film with actors and uh, all the people that were involved, I was crying looking at the end of this film. You will be glued to TV screen watching this movie from the beginning to the end, and at the end, God will touch your life. God will speak to you as well. This powerful movie is a tool to every believer and to everyone who is in the world. Everybody's going through their life's troubles and problems and situations. And this is why God has put into my heart to write this film, to write the script, and to film it. We have done this very professionally. The actors played very, very well. Hello, can I help you? Oh, hi, Pastor Max. I came to tell you all about my daughter. Remember, you came to my house and prayed for her? Hello, Dr. Jane. I've continued to pray for your daughter. How's she doing? We were enjoying doing this, doing this film as we started in last May of 2023. And now the film is available. Yes, I am a pastor. And what exactly brought you here? to this very quiet little town. My wife is here. She died two years ago. Oh, George, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Your life's so waste will be just, be just easier, easier, if easier if you're just proud. end it all. Just end do it, it. All. do it, do it, just do, do it, it now, do it now. Do you think that ending your life's gonna solve all your problems? The film is available on our platform, which is hisfilms.org. And also we introducing to you a DVD. The DVD cost is $25, shipping and handling is included. I'm sure if you will order this DVD today, you will enjoy to watch this film. Call us today, write to us, request your copy, and in a week or so after you have called us and uh, placed your order, you will receive your DVD. I know that you will enjoy this. And your family, your friends, you can invite anybody to watch this movie around your TV screen and just enjoy. This film is going to be a witnessing tool, especially to unbelievers, to unbelieving family, to unbelieving friends. Invite them to watch this film and they will be blessed. I can guarantee you that. Call us today or write to us. You will see our full address on your screen. Write to us or call us is the best and make your order today. Reserve your copy today. Thank you so much. God bless you and shalom.
worship you, Jesus. Lord, you are my God. I rely on you. I put my hope on things not seen. Your promises are true. Joy 